Well, normally we don't talk about this sort of thing, kind of stray away from uh, talking about the drugs of the day, but, you know, somebody wanted to know, and I thought it was a pretty good question. Why was it that back in the 60s and 70s that so many people seemed to get hooked on heroin and those kinds of drugs? Well, I don't know. I think it's because everything was forbidden, you know, uh... I was raised in, a, in, a, in an environment that everything I did, I was going to die and go to hell, you know, <laughs> whether it's dancing, going to a movie, smoking cigarettes, having a drink of a beer or some moonshine, or any, just thinking, you know, thinking about a naked woman. I mean, just anything, going to die and go to hell. My daddy was a preacher. So when I got free from the bonds of all of that nonsense. Uh, I tried everything under the sun. I wanted to test everything in the world, all the different foods, all the different wines. Uh, uh, I didn't like beer so much, but I wanted to experiment all, and, and, and have things that I never had before because I was going to die and go to hell for everything <laughs> that I did. Even thinking about it, you know, you're out of here. Well, what's Flaming interesting? Up, what was interesting? <laughs> what a load of nonsense. What was interesting is that you read where your mother met your father when she was 14. She was 14, yeah, and she tried to fill a gap in there uh, for three years, and it didn't work, you know. I so it looks tell you. like looks like your dad was enjoying these fruits, but you weren't <sighs> supposed to. Yeah, when he wasn't supposed to, they should have probably put him in a pokey for, you know, statutory rape. But anyway, it doesn't. That's all hindsight. They they they're all dead now, you know. Well, okay. And, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's just the way well, what about what about so many of the other artists? I don't know so much about the other artists, you know, all I know is Eric's uh, uh, journey into hard drugs was planned. He wanted to do that. It wasn't like something accident, you know, we, we talked about it. Well, the uh, reason why that happened was because the people that he was into, they were doing those drugs. They Yeah, you know. well, that's sort of what he thought anyway. Um, I don't think it's, you know, some old cotton chopping blues dude's going to have enough money to get a bag of smack, but uh, uh, we might have to take a pause here. Hang on one second. I, I can't can... run over by... back at it. <laughs> All right, continuing on. I had to move the little one out of here. Yeah, it gets a little Well, fresh. what I wanted to mention was I think people don't realize is that Heavy drug use in the in in within the music world has gone on for a very long time. Back in the twenties and thirties, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, heavy. Uh, I find out, you know, reading my mom's manuscript, the things that I I didn't know before. I mean, she told me about it, but I didn't think much about it. And I I, I was introduced to uh, opium uh, when I was six months old. Uh, I, I got a uh, colic, and the thing that they were big on giving, uh, if you stubbed your toe, my mother would give me paragoric. And I looked it up today. I, I never thought about it, but you know, I looked it up. I don't know, hell, it's opium <laughs> with some aniseed. Uh, I mean, so I remember her saying about, you know, giving me opium when I was little, but I never put the two together. But if, if you had anything go wrong with you, you were, you were in line for some paragoric and it wasn't exactly the most tasty thing. But I remember it was all through my, my uh, at home, uh, growing well, up. <clears throat> a lot of housewives became addicted to drugs. Yeah, in the 50s, yeah. They were handed out like candy. Make you sweep <laughs> like a, a hoover. <laughs> I mean, yeah. nobody thought anything of it. <laughs> They didn't think anything uh, about it. So it wasn't just musicians. No, it people. wasn't just musicians. I think it was something to do with the times, you know. Well, I, 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 I don't, you know, I don't want to get anything controversial started about, you know, people, you know, putting stuff 
there before the public so they can do it, you know, in order to uh, manipulate things to make a few bucks, you know, but that happens, you know, hey, it's been going on forever. Well, in the United States, it's been a, a, a problem and it's grown so much so now that, I mean, people have been dying from prescription drugs. You were, you were, one yeah, of, I'm, you had, had that yourself. You've experienced well, Yeah, it. but I wasn't taking, you know, Oxycontin and those kind of things. Mine were psychotropic drugs, you know, and they don't get you high, you know, they don't, they don't get you high. They don't knock you down or anything. They just screw with your head, you know, um, when I read that, I, you know, well, the doctor said I was going to take this shit the rest of my life. I said, like, that ain't on. I'm not taking nothing the rest of my life. And that's when I decided I was going to get rid of everything. And I, I, they had me on two of them. And, uh, uh-uh, no, hell no. I said, you'd die. Well, I was the walking death anyway, and I was not going to have it happen anymore. You know, I wasn't going to wind up like my daddy who was a, a pharmaceutical junkie. That's what killed him. You know, I wasn't gonna let that happen to me. Hell no. And uh, I've been clean free from all that nonsense for over 20 years. Now I wouldn't touch a damn aspirin, you know. No, nothing to do with it. Yeah, well, I, mean, I, I really think that drugs have been on the scene for a very long time. You know, Too damn long. You can say that people did that only in the 60s and the 70s, but it's not the case. No, it's been going on for since <laughs> the yeah. Chinese have been you know, smoking opium and doing opium for a long time, you know. And all those businessmen <laughs> that went to China. And Dublin, uh, the Dublin uh, seaport is 2,000 years old. And that's where they used to transport, uh, and it was a drop-off port for uh, massive amounts of opium. Right. Uh, and, and that was a long, t you know, over a thousand years ago. So, I mean, this whole thing's been around a long time. It's just people haven't been talking about it, you know. But it's not something I think about. I'm busy doing something else. Well, somebody had asked the question, but, you know, I'm glad they asked. I hope they got the answer they were looking for. Probably got more. <laughs> more than. Uh, I haven't seen anything good come from it. That or the, uh, any of the uh, support for the Anheuser-Busch company, you know, sucking all that bad beer down. <laughs> I, haven't seen, I haven't seen any good come from any, any anybody drinking lots of whiskey and carrying on acting a fool. I haven't seen any good come from that. Did people doing drugs? It never did me any good. You know, I got I wrecked some beautiful cars, and I've got a mouthful of teeth that I had to buy, and I'm still buying uh, uh, because of alcohol and drugs. You know, uh, I mean, I can uh, you know, say, well, my glorious r r r raucous. Uh, 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 of impetuous youth, you know. No, hell no. It was drugs and alcohol. You know, I wouldn't erect that Daytona. I wouldn't erect that 6.3. I wouldn't erect that Mini Cooper. You know, that, that was just, well, that'd be on the wrong side of the road too, you know. So <laughs> it was like, wow. Uh, it was like not thinking right side or left side of the brain. It was called no brain, you know. Well, what was it that uh, that got you started doing heroin? Eric. He, he, the first time he did it was at the... Um, he had planned this, you know, and I was going, oh, man. <laughs> what do you mean he planned it? <clears throat> he knew he was going to do it. It wasn't some accident. He planned it. And uh, we talked about it, you know, and he had this fantasy about... Going through a uh, heroin addiction, like, uh, you know, uh, an old blues artist had done. Some of his blues, you know, you know, heroes and stuff. I didn't know about them because I didn't listen to them because I was already living that life, you know, of uh, deprivation, you know, in Dyer's Arkansas, chopping and picking cotton and beans. So I, I didn't need heroin to have the blues, you know, I already had the blues. But uh, I guess growing up in somewhat a privileged life, the only 
thing closest to that would be to actually do something to get you down. The worst drug, but they say George Harrison told me, he said, he said, I won't do it. He, George said, I'm not doing it. He said, because it's the best drug in the world. That's why people are so addicted to it. Well, Eric did it, you know, and he got behind it. And he asked me that night, was that All Things Must Pass session? That was his last session there, too. Uh, uh, if I wanted to do it, I said, no, man. I watched him do it, and uh, uh, an African uh, uh, brought it to him. And uh, uh, this guy, everybody knew who he was. But uh, I've seen him time and again coming in and out of Stiggy. I know, you're talking about a powder, right? You're not talking about, he didn't inject it. No, hell no, he didn't ever do that. Uh, he just snorted it. Uh, you can see him doing it on that Life in, in 16 or 12 bars. <laughs> life in 12 yeah, bars. Yeah, yeah he's, he's snorting that shit off <laughs> of a knife 16. blade, you know. <laughs> I've seen him do it before. Right. Woo, I was in there with him, you know, but... Thank goodness we made it through all of that. Now, well, you said you didn't want to do it, and then you did. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, uh, was I going to hang or not? You know, it was just him and me. You know, we, I was his uh, 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 for, protege, you know, and it was just the two of us, and yeah, I, I've never done anything. So you were sort of blamed for that whole situation? Is that yeah, right? oh, hell, they have it, you know, they have it, you know, back afterwards, you know, I didn't turn him on to nothing. And that was already planned because the guy was there. He he showed up. And I told Eric I didn't want to do it. When he 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 did it, and and uh, I said, "Well, how does it feel?" He said, "I feel like um, um, real secure, like a warm uh, uh, pink cotton wool is surrounding me." And then he went. Bruce McCaskin took him out back out home to Hurtwood, and he didn't come the next night. <laughs> but, uh, it, uh, and then I got with him and we did it, you know, later at Hurtwood, you know. I, I'm, I'm glad that he made it through all of that, that nightmare. That's what it was, a living nightmare. I remember him, but see, I was into like doing a lot of like pharmaceutical blow, you know, cocaine. So I was going one way and he was going another. And, you know, never the twain shall meet, you know. And, uh, when you did, you you going this way and that way at the same time, and it, it was not a good situation. Um, that's one of the reasons I, I left the whole thing. I walked away from it all. I was waiting on him to get clean, you know, because I needed to do that very same thing myself, but not from smack, because it didn't take me long to look at that hot horseshoe. And uh, when I got burned with that, and that was over, you know, so I pulled a plug on it. But I was doing other things, you know, so um, from like one thing to the next. The fact is that I was addicted, you know, and uh, that had, all that had to change. Yeah, thank goodness it did. I, I had the presence of mind just to walk away. I wonder how this went. I was sitting in Ascot. I had all, I just had the place all redone, you know, and everything. A friend, a friend of ours lives there still, you know. Uh, I looked at this place and it was full of antiques and wrecked cars in the garage and out front and then other cars and I said, um, all, you know, I have the grand pianos and the organs and all the business and all the trappings, right word. And I had guys supplying me with uh, uh, narcotics free. Yeah, I never had that. See, that's the problem of being one of the problems of being a rock star. You know, way up there, all that shit's free. You don't ever have to buy it. I never had. I, I never ever paid for any narcotics or cocaine or anything like that. It, it just came to me, and. Uh, I paid in other ways, I'm sure, you know. Uh, I don't know how I got into talking all this, you asked me about it, but, you know, I'm sure it's like, I guess it's some kind of like come to Jesus time or something. You well, know? you said all the Not drugs. really. You, know? you said all the drugs were free, and that was the problem. That they were. They, they were free. I you mean, left to get out of all of that. 
Yeah, I, I just, I was looking at it and I just went, God damn, I'm not going to be able to, I'm going to have to get out of here the same way I left. I'm going to arrive. And that's how I did it. I called a travel office and uh, <laughs> I booked the ticket to Jamaica and uh, then to LA, one way ticket. And uh, that was that. And I left and left everything behind me. And boy, it was like <sighs> when vultures came in, and took the Hessian off the walls. White carpet off the floor. Cars that I can't find, piano to organ, and I don't care. You know? That's like my guitars and things and, and this and, and other thing. That money's gone. You know, they've got to live with the memory and, and they got to explain it. they got to tell that lie every time somebody says, boy, that's a beautiful chicken and grand. Where'd you get that? I gotta remember that lie again. I'm so I don't care about all that nonsense. I never had it, you know. And I seem to have gotten through the world. Now I love our home. Now there's certain comforts that are, that are good, but damn, I, I want a nice, comfortable place to sit down and lay and lay my head. You know, it's time. And uh, thank goodness for you know life. And our, our life, our life together. Best thing that ever happened to me was you and me. Well, was there anybody that uh, that died that you were particularly struck by when they they were doing drugs or whatever? That no, you, that you lost. It just happened. I mean, if they're doing, I mean, Indiana Davis was doing smack. He tried to get me to shoot dope with him. I wouldn't do it. He said, well, the world's going to end in 1983 anyway, you know. Well, it ended sooner than that for him, you know. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't do it. I, I wouldn't stick no damn needle in me. No way. Uh-uh. And I, when I stopped doing it, I stopped. I just went through withdrawals, and that was that. And then I, in my head, I had quit. And so, I mean, I'm, it's been that way every, every, every time, you know. I don't, I, I, no, uh uh, that's something I used to do, it's, you know, it didn't define me, that's something I tried along the way, I tried a lot of things along my life's journey, but, and, 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 and individually that don't define me, you know, and, and with our band doing what we were doing, that's just something we did, that wasn't what we did all the time. You know, that's not what we were doing. We were all laying around, junked out, you know, writing songs. And it just wasn't like that at all, you know. It was tea in the morning, you know, with a boiled egg. Mrs. Eggby, you know, funnily enough, that was her name. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like what people think, you know. That happened, that was the aftermath of the sublime uh, 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 elevated part of... of what was going on, you know. That's what happened after the crash, you know, when, it, when Layla was, I remember standing in the doorway of Studio B at Olympic and Eric looked at me and said, no, what the fuck am I gonna do now? This is the epitome of my career. The best thing, we were trying to do the second album and this is what he was thinking. So the second album was a desperate attempt to come follow up Layla and Layla wasn't even accepted, but he knew it. That was the best. That was the epitome. I don't even know what it meant. Did an interview sometime, and one time, years later, somebody said something, and I said this story. I recounted it, and I said the. I, 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 I said it was the epitome, and then I read the thing, and I said so and so with the epitome. What's an epitome? You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was spouting off of big words. I've never heard of epitome. Spout. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I didn't. I'd never heard of epitome. It was a whole other integrity. I had it, didn't know it, you know. I didn't know what it was that I had. I knew I had something that was directing me and, and, and getting me to say no, lay it down, and walk away. 
there was something there, you know, that that still small boy was screaming, you know, just walk away. <laughs> Let it go, they're gonna take it anyhow, you know. Anyway. Sometimes you just have to walk away, Renee. <laughs> Yeah, I ran. I fled. You know. Um, Do you ever regret leaving? I have no regrets whatsoever. Uh, I didn't know what I didn't know, and uh, that was my learning time. And uh, if I still had all the cars and houses and furniture and their clothes and everything that I ever owned, you know, I'd still be stuck in that place that I found that I can keep all that stuff, you know, I can hoard it all, you know. Uh, you know, rich man has problems keeping his stuff, you know. That's his blues. Rich man won't blues trying to keep my shit, man. I want to keep my cars, my boats, my houses, you know, my airplanes. I want to keep all this, you know, my stuff. Poor man blues ain't got no stuff. <laughs> Wouldn't want to keep it anyway. I'm not free with all that. No. Uh -uh.